Okay. So here we okay. Are. Um, I'm going to um, uh, try to keep on talking a bit here, R roughly speaking about my attempts to understand art and reciprocity theorem ideas. And, um, and that's, you know, I, I was talking about something like that last time, but I was playing around with some fairly highbrow approaches last time, whereas today I'm going to be going in more lowbrow direction. But let me just remind mm -hmm. us of what the highbrow directions were very sketchily. So, um, well, I guess it's just that I was in the highbrow vein, I was thinking a lot, of, well, originally thinking a lot about Tanakian ideas in a certain sense, and then thinking a lot about um, something very much related to that, which is uh, uh, affine algebraic groupoids, um, or to put it in more algebraic language, what is it in more algebraic, algebraic language? It's commutative hop algebraids. Uh -huh. And um, uh, so I think there's really interesting stuff along those lines that I should follow up on as I was, you know, very ambitiously and sloppily talking about last time. Um, uh, it, it, you know, following up on ideas about moduli stacks of torsors, thinking of them as affine algebraic groupoids, taking a Tanakian approach to it, blending all these ideas together. But um, today I'm going to go back to a much more lowbrow viewpoint, and I guess I guess it's sort of like this. It's 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 sort of a. I'm not sure I like that color. Uh, I'll turn black here. Uh, it's sort of a Galois descent approach to um, art and reciprocity. Well, I mean, I got this terminology Galois descent mostly from you, but I'm, I'm imagining that you use it correctly and that I'm using it approximately correctly by following the way that you were using it. Um, so um, this is what I'm gonna be talking about and, and, and talking about, you know, getting close to making rigorous proofs and theorems out of this. And, um, but also, you know, I'm not just interested in proofs and theorems, I'm interested in, getting the ideas to a point where I can understand them in an intuitive way. Um, and so uh, the idea that I got from you about what Galois descent is about, is about this idea that, um, that it's, it's about, uh, I guess you called them weak fixed points, but maybe I, Think we should call them strong fixed points or something <laughs> but i mean strong means weak here right i mean it's ah, like yes. what ah yes <laughs> everyone's just trying to not be lax something like that yes um uh, uh but uh, strong fixed points of what well so the idea is strong fixed points well with respect to a a, a gawa group um the Galois group of a covering. Galois group of a good covering. Um and the, the good covering mean means um where the things that you're trying to study split in some sense. Is that the right word? The things that you're trying to study with, where the, where the things 
you're studying. I'm not sure it's the things that you're studying that split. It's more like the base that they live over splits or something like that. Um, split in, 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 a, in an appropriate sense, right? Mm -hmm. Does this look re recognizable as the strategy that you described to me of Galois descent? You're like... Yeah, you sort of pick a big enough field extension such so that the structures you're trying to study becomes, all become isomorphic yeah. up, up there when after extended isomorphic to some like and isomorphic to some standard thing that you can deal with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 right. And then the back down in the interesting world where it's twisted because it's not simply connected, where, where twistedness can exist because it's not simply connected, then the, the, the things like the bundles of some kind that live over that mm -hmm. space that's not simply connected, um, they are, correspond to these strong fixed points of the Galois action. Mm -hmm. um, That's, uh, there could be all sorts of imprecisions in what in the way I just said it, but I hope that you are, you at least are recognizing the ideas that I'm trying to talk about here. And we're, and we're gonna apply this to art and reciprocity in the sense of, so roughly speaking, what I mean by art and reciprocity at the moment is that I'm trying to understand horsers of finite abelian groups over spectrums of number fields. And, um, and I, I'm not that particular about what my finite abelian group is, and therefore I'm willing to always assume that it's Z mod three for now while I'm in this learning phase. So yeah, I'm interested in these Z mod three torsors uh -huh. over number fields. And, um, So, so as 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 part of this project, um, I well, so uh, I mean, so right, right now, it's supposed to be over an arbitrary number field, but one of my you know baby starting steps was working over the field of rationals um, and understanding what those Z mod three torsors are like. And um, and we, we, we can also say that roughly speaking in different language, this is perhaps the study of abelian cubic extensions, in this case of the rationals. Um, and um, again, using you know my 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 learning strategies, where I very example oriented. You know, I'm willing to let Z mod three stand in as uh, you know for any other possible finite being group. Well, I suppose I could, I right. Maybe maybe in the beginning, I was just letting the rationals stand in for any other number field, but that seems too trivial. I should have, you know, for my learning strategy, I need something that's a little bit less trivial than that. So I've been experimenting with um, the, the Gaussian rationals. And so so this is this is like one of the examples that I'm really interested in. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Z mod three torsors or a billion cubic extensions over the um, the Gaussian rationals. And, and so I will be comparing this to some examples that I did with um, Z mod three torsors over, over, the, over the ordinary rationals. Um, 
And so, um, so maybe maybe I'll sort of try to. set this up so I can sort of try and do the two examples in parallel. So I can try and take lessons that I learned from the easy case and um, apply them to this case, which should be almost as easy, but it's just a little bit less vanilla. Um, and um, so, So, so let me let me try to remind us of some examples here. And um, this this uh, this will involve some drawing some pictures, and uh, I'm not sure how good I'm going to be at drawing these pictures on the spur of the moment. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, uh, but uh, so yeah, so 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 let me think here. So, uh, so how does how does this work? So, well, so when I was trying to understand Z mod three torsions over the rationals. I took a look at the 63rd uh, cyclotomic field. Yes. And um, so we have, uh, you know, that, that, that's an abelian extension of the rationals. And for good conceptual reasons, the Gawa group of that extension is GL one. Am I doing this right? Z mod sixty three. By the way, yes, the person you always refer to as your friend drew. Yes, pictures of this stuff. Yes, um, and he like drew them in his usual fancy style. And, and he sent me some. I probably I don't think he drew all the pictures that you wanted to draw. Um, unfortunately. Well, if I had been more organized, then yes, I could take better advantage of this. But I, I just did not yeah. quite manage to be organized enough today. So well, what I have rambling here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So what he sent me was this one picture, which is just um, showing how GL one. Well, maybe I'll just share it for a second. That's okay. That's faster than explaining. It okay, go ahead. More fun. Sure. So just, sure. It'll just take a second. I'm not trying to derail things, honestly. No, no, no. It probably yeah. can't hurt. Yeah. So he so he drew this picture here of ah yes that you sometimes wanted. So anyway, here's a here's a thing of how yes that that that, so that may very well be helpful. Um. He didn't draw that other more amazingly complicated picture that you sometimes draw, which is well, fine. right? It's like the sub. The, if, if if perhaps yeah, the he did draw matters. this picture. This is like for Zima twenty, the subgroup. Yes, this is your favorite thing. This reminds me of like this uh, Hebrew tree of life mystical. I'm not sure I know that Hold picture. On. But Wait, look here. It reminds me of. Um, e Ching or Korean stuff or something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So he drew that and then this. But he yeah, but yeah, you you drew this sort of you started to draw the analogous thing for the yes. Yeah. And I really uh, need something like that at the moment. <laughs> I did. What? Yeah. I almost was gonna ask him, come on, draw this. Draw this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's right. Well, we'll we'll we're we're gonna have to draw some very sketchy. Pretend approximation of that for this. So it should be. It's going to be. Yeah, but we're going to have One to. One thing we've something. never attempted to do is to watch a YouTube video 
of ourselves while we're making a video. And like for a minute, I was thinking that's going to create some horrible feedback, but it won't create any. Are you going to try that right now? Uh, maybe I'll let you talk. And meanwhile, I'll search for the picture that you, <laughs> that you drew. All, all, all right. All right. Um, so I'll stop this thing and I'll let you can proceed. You have to re, you have to grab control again, I guess. Okay. Okay. Let me see if it can. Uh, Sorry, it's for doing that. But, uh, get this to work. All right. So, yeah, I, I mean, but already this is helpful because I was just about to note that, you know, by the Chinese remainder theorem, this is uh, GL1 Z mod 9 cross GL1 Z mod. Um, So, <laughs> and yeah, so, so, I mean, what, what so, so what is supposed to be the point of this? The, po the point of this is that we're, we're, we have some, we have some, uh, Is it well? I mean, I mean, so these groups are of let, let's 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 write down the sizes of these groups. So I, I guess it turns out that they're both size six by some funny coincidence. <laughs> yeah, and we saw that there was that little six by six uh, yeah. picture of representatives of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And right, so one axis is like uh, GL1 Z mod nine. Well, so we're, <laughs> I hope you're getting the idea that we're gonna need to be doing something like this in this other example over this Gaussian example. Um, and, you know, so it's kind of, complicated to set up and everything, but let's see if we can. Uh... Well, so, right, right. One of the key points is that the, you know, this, this group is size 36, because each of these two factors is size six. And so, so I guess that means that, what am I trying to say that, uh, Sorry, I have a stupider question. So, are you yeah, go ahead. Are, are you interested in Z mod three torsors over the rationals? Is that what's the top part of the chart? Yes, that's right. That's okay, right. So, so where Z did Z? So where does? Okay. Uh, yes. Go ahead. So where did the sixty third cyclotomic field get into the picture? It was an arbitrary one, of course, but. Uh, yeah, well, well, it's going to have to do with some nice examples. Um, so, what am I trying to say? That uh, that well. <laughs> so, first of all, let me just flip back for a second. So, um, th these strong fixed points. What? What that's going to mean concretely in this case of trying to understand Z mod three torsors over number fields, it's going to mean that we're going to have these. Uh, so, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be. We're, we're going to be studying. Uh, some number field, I guess we'll call it K. And on the next page, we'll see that K could be the rationals or it could be the Gaussians. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we're going to have, we're going to be interested in some uh, abelian cubic extension of K, 
which I guess maybe I'll call it K prime or something like that. And, and, and this is going to be, you know, the, this is things have not split yet, right? We're, um, but we're going to pull back to a cover where something's going to split. I guess what's actually going to split is the, the group Z mod three is going to split. Um, Sorry, and that's going to split at K prime or it's not going to even split. There. No, no, it's not there. It's, it's going to split at K tensor, the Eisenstein field. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then we're going to take this push out, but geometrically it's a pullback. And so, you know, you know we've, we've got this torsor over K, but we're going to pull it back to a torsor over this double cover, I guess, of uh, K. Um, or Sorry, which one's the double cover? The, the spectrum uh, of, of the thing on, on, on top here. So uh -huh. is that push out just K prime tensor Q Eisenstein? I think probably. Uh, yes, I think. I think that's correct. Uh, well, not only is that correct, but that should be that's correct almost by definition. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. So that's uh, right. It's it's saying. Uh, am I doing this right? Uh, it's yeah. That's what I'm saying. K prime tensor over K. Yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. Of, uh, 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 of no, okay, no, no, okay, that's a little different than what I was saying. So it's good that you, good that you corrected me there. But yeah, actually, did I still say this right, Lindy? So I, I guess eh, that's a lot smaller. Okay. It's Can you do that? I, I have a feeling I, I did some shortcut there, but I have a feeling it's okay. Uh -huh. I mean, I, 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 right, I should have written the tensor product of this thing and this thing, but I have a feeling it's like. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> I think it's okay. I'm, I'm being. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, okay. So, here's like my question is like. Yeah. So, if we were trying to understand. Like Z mod three torsors over K, it would make a lot of sense to to sort of carry them on up to, to a K tensor Q Eisenstein, because then they would split up there. So then, but then the, my question hey, is so well, again, the group would split up there. Z mod three actually splits over the Eisenstein. Yeah, sorry, that's what I meant to say. Yes. Um, well, maybe. So then my question is, uh, why are you bothering with this K prime here? I mean, why don't you just stick with the, <laughs> why did, if we were interested in K to begin with, why are you bringing in K prime? Or maybe that's not what you're in. Well, I mean, uh, it, it, uh, so because, far, okay, because, I mean, we're, we're supposed to be interested in Z mod three torsors, but I'm kind of cheating here and just thinking of it as an abelian cubic extension. An abelian cubic extension is almost synonymous with a Z mod three torsor, and oh, and, and that's what this is supposed to be. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, sorry, that's good. What did that just do? Oh um, no, yeah, I've done that occasionally. That's some weird. Yeah. Okay. Change of state. Uh, yeah, let me see if I can fix this change of state. Uh, I don't know. How do I fix that? I don't know. So cause... clumsy at this. Uh. I think that's like between you and your tablet or something. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm I'm bad enough at this. I'm just going to turn our screen sharing and then turn it back on. Okay, that's fine. I'm all in favor of brutal solutions to boring problems. Okay. Okay, that did fix it. So um, yeah, I'm just writing the here down here that this is abelian cubic. 
Okay, sorry. I, I, and this one up here is also a BA in cubic. What? Yeah, so that, that makes my question sound almost silly because it's, anyway, yes. Okay, but I didn't- Well, but it's just another sloppiness that I'm yeah. introducing so, into so the, that. Okay, so now finally back to my original question. So yes, put this a long time ago, but is that Z mod 63 business? Is that like, wait a minute. So what does that have to do with the cubic extensions of anything? Uh, where did the Z mod 63 show up? Well, the nine and the seven are showing up for slightly different reasons. Um, so oh. I, I, but the, the seven is showing up because, uh, I mean, the seven is just a good example of a prime whose multiplicative group is of order divisible by three. So it's good for getting, that's, that's going to mean that it's good for getting cubic, being cubic extensions. And, so I think yeah. that there are a bunch of abelian cubic extensions in any field extension whose Galois group is no. So what is yeah, it? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not I'm not not saying it very well yet. So I mean, sorry, Zen mod seven. Yeah. Oh, so, so okay. I, ah, yes. Okay, I think I know how to say it, but go ahead. Yes. I'll try to say it. Sorry. I, so you're saying that the seventh cyclotomic field has a bunch of cubic, ex, billion cubic extensions of the rationals in it. Uh, it, it has at least one. <laughs> okay. Well, you said it's good for getting them. Okay, but it has at least one. Uh, well, okay. Can I think what you're saying? A billion cubic extension of the rationals. Uh, I think that's right. Um, but so but, you're going yeah. up to the 63rd cyclotomic field because you want to get some examples of abelian cubic extensions of the rationals. Yeah. Yes, but 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 more particularly, it has to do with the fact that we want to study the abelian cubic extension of the rationals by um, you know ascending to. Uh, an abelian cubic extension of the Eisenstein um, mm -hmm. field, or you know, in, in when you know when k is non-trivial, then this thing up here will be the relative Eisenstein thing. Uh, and um, but but we're doing the case where k is just the rationals. Um, and. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I guess the point is, I mean, you mentioned, you know, some abelian cubic extensions inside the seventh cyclotomic field, and maybe that's right. But what I'm really doing is I'm, I'm finding a bunch of abelian cubic extensions inside the 63rd cyclotomic field. Yeah. And. Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm caught up as to what, why you're doing all this. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. So in, in, in fact, we could take this, one of the things we could do here is we could take this thing here, GL1 of Z mod 63, and we could tensor that with the three element field. And um, if you kind of stare at that, you, you'll see that you'll get something like this. Isn't that right? Uh, I mean, right, you're killing, we're, you know, we're killing off the, the two part, killing off the two torsion and just, just getting the three torsion. Um, that's kind of what, right? Am I saying that right? <laughs> uh, is that the right word, torsion? I don't know. But, uh, yeah. right, this abelian group. That has uh, two torsion when you're killing off, getting a group who's. Yeah, I, but I have a feeling I'm misusing the terminology. But 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 when you tensor this 36 element abelian group with the with with the the three element field, and I'm I'm emphasizing that it's a three element field here because I actually want to think of this nine element thing as a, a two dimensional vector space over the three three element field. Mm -hmm. So in your old 
discussion of this, which I'm staring at on YouTube. You took yes. that by six thing and you sort of folded it over to get a three by six thing. And now yes. you be going further and going down to a three by three thing. <clears throat> it's like last time you didn't. Maybe yes, just... but. No, but right, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this nasty thing. I'm gonna take over yet again, and I'm gonna just for a second show you. So, like, yes, but let me just say, let me just say that you're actually right. Um, that it, yeah, this is actually exactly the picture I want. This is exactly the picture I want. Okay. And um, uh, yeah. Right. So, so this picture is. This is a still, a frozen still. Well, it is now. It is now. Okay. Um, so, yes. So, you know, these are some. This is this is part of the Galois correspondence for the subfields of the sixty third cyclotomic field, and. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, so the, the 63rd cyclotomic field is um uh you know because that Galois group is size 36, this is a 36 degree extension of the rationals, 36 degree extension of the rationals. But the highest thing that shows up in this little fragment is an 18 dimensional um uh extension of the rationals. And 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 so in fact this I guess this is the Gawa correspondence for all of the subgroups of that 18 dimensional thing. Uh, oh. <laughs> I, I just like the look on my face in that little still there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know I I know I talk that way out of the side of my mouth. But anyway, um so uh why is it yeah why is it why did he take that six by six thing and fold it or whatever down to a three by six thing? So it's like the. Yeah, I think I know I did it, but keep going. Yes. Well, so there's a nine axis and a seven <laughs> axis sort of, and and one of them is you're treating differently than the other for some. That, that's right. That's right. And so, right. I mean, it's, 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 we're really interested in cubic extensions, abelian cubic extensions. Mm -hmm. But that forces us to be interested in one particular very non-cubic extension, which is the Eisenstein extension, because that's like a helper guiding extension that helps all the abelian cubic extensions. In fact, it, it, it helps cubic extensions in, in general. Um, it helps them. It, it helps them in a certain way. I mean, and, <laughs> and and but but it is itself not cubic, right? It is quadratic, right? And so that's what's going on here. That's why we're you know we um, we're we're you know let, let's 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 see if we can say this correctly. What this little Gawash correspondence is telling us. So, okay, so first of all, let me remind myself that the Galois correspondence is sort of upside down. And right, we've got this sort of folding over here thing so that, right, actually the, right. So the smallest Galois group is at top, but the point is that we're not getting any smaller. <laughs> Let's see. We're not getting any smaller than the Eisenstein's, I guess. So that would, that would make sense anyway. Well, uh, <laughs> again, it's upside down, so I, I, I'm not sure I said it right. I mean, right? The I have to keep, you know, the well, the when the group gets big, the field gets small. When, when the subgroup gets big, the subfield gets small. And yeah. I have to straighten out which it is that I'm talking about here. So what have we got here? So let's see. Okay, you can see my cursor 
Is, is that right? Can you see my cursor? Maybe no. you can't see my cursor. Okay, but then you have to move the cursor over to where that two-dimensional thing is. Did you see my cursor? Yes. Okay, the two-dimensional thing here? Yeah. So yeah. let's think about that. Actually, let's go down to the one-dimensional thing. So that is the rational field in this Galois correspondence. It's the biggest subgroup, but it's the smallest subfield. Yeah. So that's the rationals. And then uh, the two-dimensional thing right above that, that's the Eisenstein field. Oh. So that's, that's not a cubic extension, but it's really, really important in helping the other cubic extensions and helping us to understand the other cubic extensions. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, you can see that, right, it's, it's in the folded over picture, it's got those nine red dots, but in the unfolded picture, it's, I guess, 18 red dots. So it's like 18 out of 36. So it's like an index two subgroup, which means mm -hmm. that it's corresponding to a degree two extension of the rationals. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. But then there are these, um, there's that row of three-dimensional uh, extensions. Uh, you see that row? Yeah, that row there of the three-dimensional extensions. And again, it's perhaps a little bit unfortunate that the three-dimensional extensions in this picture occur at a lower level than the two-dimensional one, because you know maybe we should have skewed it, arranged it a little bit better so you could see that they're getting bigger as you go up in the Galois correspondence. Yeah. But so um, you really want to study, you're saying. Yes, that's and right. Then, but then you throw in the Eisenstein extensions to pop them up here and then helps them. Is that the idea? That's right. That's right. So we're going to, you know, the, the Galois descent is from this row with the two dimensional thing and the six dimensional thing back down to the bottom where there's the one dimensional thing and the three dimensional thing. It's really the Galois descent is kind of from the six dimensional. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I mean, so, you know, the you ability so that it actually looks like you're descending, which is <laughs> sheer coincidence, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was it, it's sheer coincidence, but that doesn't mean I wasn't trying to do it. Okay. Um, I was trying to do it, but, you know, I'm, I'm lucky if it worked out that way. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. right. So okay. these four three-dimensional things, those are uh, the abelian cubic extensions of the rationals. The four six-dimensional things above them, those are the abelian cubic extensions of the Eisenstein thing. Uh-huh. And... Cool. Um, ah, so this is that push-out square that you're drawing. <laughs> a bunch of them. Oh, yes, please. that's right. You can see these. Yes, exactly. That's exactly right. You can see those four oh. push-out squares there. Great. Okay, cool. But when I was drawing this picture, I don't think I said a whole lot about the nine-dimensional thing and the 18-dimensional thing. Because I wasn't, I don't think I said a whole lot about them because I don't think I was thinking about them. Uh-huh. But um, but now I am thinking about them. And they are, they, they seem useful in helping me to understand the art and reciprocity theorem. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, but, but so, so, so let's think a little bit about what they correspond to. They correspond to well, I mean, that nine dimensional extension, it's just kind of the Supremum of all those three dimensional extensions. Yep. So it's nice just in the stupid way of just being like a place where they all live. That's right. But, but it's also good for me. It's like a resting place in terms of developing the art and correspondence. So I'm not, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if that's standard terminology, but what I mean by the art and correspondence is this correspondence between abelian extensions and splitting patterns. And, you know, mm -hmm. these are splitting patterns. That's one way of thinking about these Galois subgroups that we're seeing is that we can think of them in, as splitting patterns, saying how primes split. And mm -hmm. um, so the thing is, <laughs> 
I sometimes have, let, uh, so is this really true? I, I'm, I sometimes have trouble distinguishing these particular four abelian extensions of the rationals from each other. Um, Are you putting yeah. in cube roots of different? Yes. Numbers? Yes, cube roots of different numbers and cube roots with cube roots with this funny cube roots of numbers with this funny strong fixed point property. Um, and so th these particular four cube roots all have to do with. The prime seven and the prime three, or something like that. Let's see. So, what am I trying to say? So, yeah, I think that's right. I think that's right. Yeah. So, so what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, as usual, I didn't quite finish the my homework assignment, but I made a lot of progress on it, and I'm trying to describe what's the point where I sort of gave up so that we can see, you know, how much of it I did versus how much of it I still have left to do. So and in fact, so right now we're doing this with, you know, right now we're studying abelian cubic extensions. But in fact, this phenomenon that I'm trying to explain right now, you can already see it even with abelian quadratic extensions. Um, so, so let me talk about abelian quadratic extensions for a moment. So a being quadratic extensions have to do with taking square roots. Mm -hmm. And am I saying it right that right in, in, in that case, you don't even have to use Galois descent because the group Z mod two was already split over the rationals. Mm -hmm. So right, you don't even have to do the the Galois descent trick in that example. But um, but so 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 sort of the secret for me, roughly speaking, the secret to quadratic reciprocity is that when you're trying to figure out which quadratic splitting pattern corresponds to which quadratic extension, so as you're trying to figure out the Artin correspondence for, for, for the quadratic extensions. And that's basically what quadratic reciprocity is. Um, you know, it's this little tiny starting point of Artin reciprocity. Um, uh, when you're trying to establish this, con this, this, this correspondence, it's very obvious except for one little thing, which is you can get confused between like the square root of seven, and the square root of negative seven, or the square root of five and the square root of negative five. Um, so like, oh, oh, what am I trying to say? That it, it's something like this, the square root of a, or let me call it n to suggest that it's an integer or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and not necessarily a negative integer. Because you know that's that's the sort of confusion here. We're getting confusion between the positive and the negative versions of a, of an integer, and um, so right. I mean, these are very different quadratic extensions sure. of 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 the rationals. One's an imaginary quadratic extension, and the other one's a real quadratic extension. Mm -hmm. So they're very different quadratic extensions, but but in a way they have very similar splitting patterns. They're very similar splitting patterns. Enough that I get I, I you know I probably get confused which one has which. So it's and 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 it's something like it's something like. Well, so let me do let me just do some silly example like twenty nine or something like that. So we're interested in the splitting patterns for the square root of 29 and for the square root of negative 29. And like I say, they're both very similar. In other words, 
they both roughly speaking have a modulus as as splitting patterns they have a, a, a modulus of of 29 approximately um it's like uh you know what I mean when I talk about the modulus of a splitting pattern. So these splitting patterns, these abelian splitting patterns, are congruence patterns. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, for the, the one for the square root of twenty nine is a quad a quadratic splitting pattern, or it's like an index two subgroup, but modulo twenty nine. And and sorry, what's a modulo? What's an index two subgroup of what? Okay, so uh, so uh, let's take GL one comma Z mod twenty nine. Uh -huh. Okay, and if you think about that, if you that's that's got a unique index two subgroup because right it, it's 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 a six uh -huh. so it has yes that's right that's right it's it's yes it's a cyclic subgroup z mod 28 mm -hmm. and that has a unique index two subgroup yep and that is the congruence pattern for something and I can never quite remember whether it's the congruence pattern for the square root of 29, or is it the splitting congruence pattern for the square root of negative 29? So the ones that are in the subgroup split, the primes that are yes, the ones, the ones the, the, the how do I say it? You know, you could express it in the language of quadratic residues. Um <laughs> And, oh. and and since it's since it's since it's quadratic re uh -huh. re reciprocity for the residues, I always get confused about which one is the residue and which one is the modulus. But um, we should be able to figure it out in this case, right? So we're saying, what are we trying to say? Uh, the quadratic residues modulo twenty nine are the ones that split. Yeah, that mm -hmm. that yeah, yeah, that the square root of twenty nine, or perhaps it's the square root of negative twenty nine. I can never remember which would yeah, exist. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. The quadratic residues. Let me just for our yeah number theory ignorant friends here, like even more ignorant than me. Yes, me people like that. So 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 those would be the things that are squares in Z mod 29. And so those are things that are doubles of something in the in the uh in the multiplicative group, which is isomorphic to Z mod 28. So those would be things that are in the index two subgroup of Z mod 28. Yeah. So those are the ones that split. Okay, that's sort of the proof. <laughs> right. So this, you know, so so that, that so that that description of them of as quadratic residues that had to do with them having square roots, right? But but the reciprocity thing is that that oh, is the key right. to mm -hmm. when the square root of twenty nine exists. Yep. Or perhaps it's the square root of negative twenty nine. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so do you see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm sort of saying that I'm too stupid to tell the difference between the square root of 29 and the square root of negative 29 at this point. So I'm sort of lumping them together. Or you could say that I'm, yeah, I'm lumping them together. So I can just take the, the double quadratic extension that includes both of them. Mm -hmm. And... That would yeah. act, and, and what but that's and that if you think about that, that's also the equivalent of taking the square root of twenty nine, but over the um, the Gaussian field. We have the square root of negative one, so you can flip back and forth between. Yeah. Uh, I mean, are you trying to? Are you saying that this is just because of your laziness, or are you like hinting that this is like actually a a good thing to do? 
Uh, I, 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 my laziness is always a good thing to do. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> I, yeah, I know now. I remember what you're like. Yeah. Right. Um, and, uh, but, you know, but, but, uh, but, you must sometimes feel guilty for not doing something that you you might want to do. So I well, mean, I, I mean, we're supposed we're supposed to do this the right way, but I mean, I mean, I'm just reporting on the progress so far, and, okay. and the progress so far hasn't gotten us hasn't gotten me past this um, laziness yet. Okay. So no, I, was ask, I was trying to ask if, like, yeah, you were trying to hint that this is like some secretly smart thing to do it is might it be it 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 might be it, it 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 might be but i'm getting a little bit confused about this but but the thing that we just described in the quadratic case is this mm -hmm. same thing that we're doing in the quadratic in the cubic case now that we're staring at here so that's what that's why i'm sort of saying that right there are these four cubic extensions here uh -huh. Or being cubic extensions, and I'm sort of too lazy to tell them apart. In the same way that I'm too lazy to tell apart the square root of 29 extension and the square root of negative 29 extension. So I, am I seeing this right? So is this? Let's see. What am I trying to say? What are you um, doing? You're going up to this thing that's labeled nine here because you just don't want to worry about. Which I mean, this is a little weird attitude to take if you're studying cubic extensions to say that like I don't I can't tell the difference between cubic extensions. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's progress. But it's progress. Um, okay. okay. Uh, so, it, so, and what am I trying to say? So it's like, well, okay, yes. So, I mean, you were you were accusing me of maybe sneakily doing something smart here, and I'm trying to do something smart here. And the, you know, if I try to put a good face on this and, and pretend that I'm doing something smart here, then what I'm perhaps trying to do here is I'm trying to I'm trying to single out a certain phenomenon that's playing a role in the art and correspondence here, and and it's it's this phenomenon that's that I'm not quite prepared to do it the correct way, but I can see that it's interceding here um, and, and, and that it has to be dealt with. And that is, so, so what am I trying to say? It has to do with the unit group of the number ring, uh, you, you know, the, the, the invertible algebraic integers in the number field. Um, right, because what am I trying to say that if, yeah, let's go back to, to the, let's go back to the example of square root of 29 versus square root of negative 29, okay? Mm -hmm. So what am I trying to say that, that, That uh, that let me think for a second. Let me think of me. Uh, yes, that that uh, the. What's the what's the source of this confusion that I have between twenty nine and negative twenty nine, or between their squares, their, 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 between their square roots? And the source of the confusion is the existence of this neg number negative one in in the integers yep. that that is invertible, and you know because it's invertible, that means you know. That that means that what am I trying to say? That if I just if 
you know, if I try to guess which one of the two corresponds to um, to, to you know the the quadratic residues inside of uh, Z mod twenty nine, mm -hmm. then. Uh, then there's it's it's like there's no really good way to guess unless I were smarter and less lazy. What does the other one correspond to? If one's the quadratic residues, what's the other one? Sorry, I should know this, but I don't. Right. And if I were smarter, I could tell you the answer. But it's it's something like it's something like 29, you have to take 29 times four. And see, and that 29 times four, that's gonna be the analog of this seven times nine or something in the in the cubic case, I think. <laughs> something like that. Uh so what am I trying to say? That uh the the See, it has. Oh, while I'm while I'm stumbling around searching for an answer here, let me mention that this probably has something to do with the way Conway talks about negative one as a prime, and how that relates to real fields versus, you know, like real, for example, real quadratic extensions versus imaginary quadratic extensions. That the the real ones are not ramified at the prime negative one, whereas the complex ones are ramified at the prime negative one, if I said it more or less correct. Mm -hmm. um, but what am I trying to say? Okay, so okay, so what was your question again? Your question was? Well, I'm regretting it. Because... No, no, it's a good question. Uh, the, the, yeah, so... well, I know that. But... <laughs> I'm regretting it, but... Um, I, I mean, if, if, if you think about something... You said they're like, oh, I can never remember what's Z square root of joint square root of 29, Z is a joint square root of negative 29, which one of them has prime splitting at the quadratic residues? And I was just saying like, well, that's, I, 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 okay, uh, but what does the other one have that's prime splitting at if it's not the quadratic residues? So it, 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 it's also going to involve the, you know, the, 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 the modulus of congruence 29, but there's going to be this other additional modulus of congruence, which is four. And so, you know, it's like, what, what is that? Uh, 116 or something? Uh, is that four times 29? Yes. Uh, well, I never so it's going to be, a, I think it's going to be a congruence pattern modulo 116. So is it the, like one of them is equal to, so, I mean, I, the more familiar thing is like, yeah, like, right. I mean, you know, try some more familiar example. Yes. This is like a lower example. I yes. Mean, so there's this whole business about like, I'm probably getting this wrong. So there's a whole business about like, uh, well, I guess we could do the square root of negative one versus the square root of positive one. <laughs> right. Well, okay. I was thinking about that, but then I was like, that's why I was hemming and hawing because it wasn't working. So one of them is like one mod square root of three. Those guys, the primes like that, they split over the Gaussians. Say it again. Yes, am I right? The primes that are equal to one mod, sorry, I said, <laughs> the primes that are equal to one mod four. Yes. Split over the Gaussians. That's right. But okay, but in this case, there's no, there's no part. Yes, of that. this is an anomalous case, right? Because no, the square root of yeah. one already exists automatically or something like that. But I thought there was something about yeah. things that are equal to. Uh, I, anyway, I wanted to say there's something else where that's the primes that are equal to three mod four. But anyway, those are the ones that don't split. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, those are the ones that don't split. Yeah. Okay. Um, but anyway, the yeah. So that's I guess because negative one because one ramifies over the Gaussians. No. Well, let, let me make another semi mysterious, semi lazy remark here, which is that. Uh, like I said, the, the, you know, the, the the 
complication that is causing this problem here that I don't know how to deal with the right way yet is 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 caused by the the the, the multiplicative group of the of 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 the base ring now I'm right it's not just the right it's not just the base field but it's the it's the the things that are invertible in the in, in the ring in the, in the ring of algebraic integers in the field though so, so somehow somehow Fourier analysis with respect to that little finite group well see it's not necessarily a finite group but Fourier analysis with respect to that group is somehow intruding here and complicating the um the mm -hmm. did you say the unit group sorry uh yes yes uh -huh. yeah like you know the unit group of the gaussian integers yeah. is right. yeah i'm gonna make an even more you know, use that as an excuse to make a much more lazy remark. So yes. I've been thinking about Brouwer groups and how the Brouwer groups are part of this bigger thing, which I call the Brouwer three group. Yes. The Brouwer group has its pi one, and then it has a Picard group as its pi two, and then it has the units group. All this is of some ring. Yes. Yes. Is, as it's pi three yes so you're just make so you're not really studying that stuff because you're not now because you're not studying central you're not studying azumaya <laughs> you're doing but that's also a galois descent problem and so it's there somehow like the units group is sort of like getting blended in with the thing that you might want to be studying which is yes i don't think that i don't think that that brower Sorry, which one was? <laughs> what was the order? Units group, and then Picard group. Picard group, and then I can call, I can call the next one the Brower group for now. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's called. So I don't think that that Brower group is going to intrude on this problem that I'm working on here, which is trying to understand art and reciprocity by Galois descent. But I think that the huh. I think that the Picard group might intrude. Yeah, that's a good point. That is the I, that's the ideal class group, basically. Right, and, and and so so you know somehow it's it might be just constrained that 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 unit group and that Picard group, those might be the only ones that intrude on this um, particular problem, and maybe the you know the Brower one is out of range. Whereas when we get to other problems, right, it wouldn't be that surprising if you have like, in general, you know maybe like two or three neighboring. Uh, groups that intrude on a given problem because they're at a certain level or certain. certain well, one, one way to think yeah. about it is that that Broward stuff is what you're studying separable algebra, central separable algebras. Yeah. Over a field, for example. Yeah. Or a ring. Yeah. Um, but but if you take the commutative central separable algebras, so then you don't have to say central anymore. Right. Those are the separable, commutative separable algebras. And then right. the commutable, ah, the commutative separable algebras over a field are just the separable field extensions. If they're right, sorry, they are the finite separable field extensions. So, so, right. so the Brouwer's stuff restricted as a non-commutative so study of non-commutative algebras that are especially nice. But if you restrict it to the commutative case, then you really are just studying uh, separable field extension. So so it could be that so that it could be that like the bottom part, the Brouwer part is like all about the non-commutative stuff, but we're like only focusing on the top two, which is the ideal class group and the units group, which are sort of like what you see in the commutative it could it could be something like that i'm just a little bit worried I don't want to worry about this at the moment but i'm just i am just a little bit worried about you and i might think of some sort of convention flip about which one is bottom and which one is top or something like that i was calling the units group the or thinking of the unit group as the bottom one but you're thinking of 
the unit group is the top one. I don't know how we managed to make that convention flip, but yeah, for me, I was yeah, I had this three group and the. I'll have to think about that. I let's not worry about it too much now. Right now, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, once you freaked me out by thinking you thought it was like n morphisms in an n category is at the bottom. <laughs> like you're doing that again now. You like uh, it could be. It could be. Yeah, that might be what I'm doing. But uh, let's not worry about it too much right okay. now. Okay. Sorry, we're digressing massively. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so anyway, so you're talking about how the unit group sort of intrudes, perhaps not purely just out of like you're too lazy to remember some fact, but because it's like. Yeah. So, so did I remember to say something mysterious about that this sort of seems like it has something to do with Fourier analysis with respect to that unit group or something like that? Yeah, that's what got me. Uh huh. Wondering okay. What... Okay, so 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 uh, uh, again, but the lazy my my very lazy way out at the moment is that you know if I can't remember what the splitting pattern is for the square root of twenty nine versus what the splitting pattern is for the square root of negative twenty nine, well, I can at least I could just take those two splitting patterns and intersect them, and that will give me the splitting pattern for having both of them. I think if I if I'm not screwing up too bad. Split over both of them, or split yeah. over. The, you know what 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 are the primes? The what, what 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 are the primes that have? You know what, what are the primes whose finite fields have both the square root of twenty nine and the square root of negative twenty nine in them? And that will, uh -huh. you know, that will be the intersection of the of the two, and 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 it's easier to figure out what that intersection is. I mm -hmm. think. Than to um... mm -hmm. okay uh huh and so 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 now so now let's try to think about what I just said that that's laziness and sloppiness and now let's let's try to apply it to this cubic case that's staring at us on the screen okay okay so. <laughs> Let me see if I can get this to work. Um, hmm, I'm trying to say something like, what am I trying to say? I'm staring, I'm, I'm staring at that 18 on top at the moment. Now, now remember that, right? That you know, that's really a six by six square folded over. So it's really corresponding to a two element subgroup of the general linear group there. Mm -hmm. And so that splitting pattern, am I saying this right? It's what is it? It's it involves. Okay, so it uh, okay, it involves both. Three and nine. Uh, both, you know, th both the prime three and and um, the prime seven, or both the you know the prime power nine and the prime seven. Um, I think it's about like yeah, three and seven, as opposed to nine and seven. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, I'll, I'll have to think about that, but not, not nine is doing something. Yeah. Um, uh, no, I, actually, I don't understand what you meant by that. I mean, it, it doesn't involve congruence modulo nine or something. Oh, you, you, yeah. I'm trying to say that the axis that you've. Oh, the axis. Yes, the axis. Uh, is, the sure. Three. The axis is correspond to three and seven. Yes. But I'm saying that the. This rectangle is shorter in one direction than the other, and it's shorter in the. I'm guessing it's shorter in the three direction, having to do with the fact that the prime three gets well, squared. I'm pretty sure my horizontal axis here is the three it's, axis. Ah, uh, oh no. Okay, then I got it wrong. Unless I really screwed it up somehow. Um. 
So why are you making the seven axis half as short, half as long? Because I'm tensoring it with the three element field. So it just collapses down to a three element uh, group. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas but with the prime three, I don't want to censor it with the three element field. I want to, you know, keep the little two torsion part because that's related to the Eisenstein extension, which is a quadratic extension, not a, 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 a cubic extension. Um, okay. So, so. So, yeah, so I, I am suggesting that, you know, that I'm close to being able to state and prove this um, lazy version of the art and correspondence here. Um, Okay. And in a way that, for example, would generalize to, you know, using the Gaussian integers as the base instead of the uh, rationals as the base. Um, and, 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 you know, my, my, my plan for today was sort of to try to demonstrate some of that. Um, but let's see. But. Well, so, <laughs> so I mean, we haven't been focusing very much on this strong fixed point property here. So, I mean, let me let me try to tell you what I think are the numbers whose cube roots are corresponding to these um, uh, uh, these abelian cubic extensions. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so. You know, because we're using the Galois descent method, these things who, that we're taking cube roots of, they are actually Eisenstein quantities rather than just ordinary rational quantities. And, you know, so, so, so the four abelian extensions of the Eisenstein field, so those are the six dimensional thing. I'm, I'm going to try to tell you what those correspond to. And again, I'll have trouble telling you which is which, but then I'll know that the 18 dimensional thing is just kind of the supremum of all of those. Uh huh. And so uh, I think what I want to say is something like, um, I want to say something like, uh, yeah, <laughs> is this gonna work? I hope this is gonna work. Um, so, uh, well, I did just notice something that looks a little bit helpful, which is that there is one of these four six dimensional extensions whose pattern looks a little bit different from the others. So that one might stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, that one? <laughs> no. <laughs> they all look different from each other. No, no, no. There's one that, you can't tell which one it is. It's the circled one. Okay. And right, it's it's splitting pattern is distinctive from the from the other three because it's. Am I saying this right? It's purely. Yes, it's purely a um, modulus. It's 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 purely associated with the prime three. It doesn't associate with the prime seven in any way. Right. The the. the uh huh. That, so I think that is the it's, it's, that's the splitting pattern for the cube root of the primitive cube root of of one. Um, so in other words, that's mm -hmm. that's going to be like the the okay. you know the ninth 
Okay. Cyclotomic field, the cube, the, the ninth roots of unity or something like that. But the other three, I think, are going to be exactly this kind of ambiguity that I was talking about. I think it's going to be like, uh, Yeah, I think it's going to be three different cube roots and, uh, you know, the, the cube roots of three different numbers, but those three different numbers will differ just by multiplying by cube roots of unity. And what is one of those numbers? Okay, so they all have this uh, strong fixed point property and one of them is, okay, you, 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 this is what you do. You take the prime seven. Uh -huh. <laughs> and this could sound like some weird cookbook thing, but it's it really makes sense in terms of this uh, uh, strong fixed point property. And we we talked about how you can think of it as being like an eigenvector property over the three element field. Um, that's what this strong fixed point property works out to be in this particular context. It turns out to be you can think of it as an eigenvector of, of something over the three element field. So, uh, so what you do is, you, here's the cookbook thing. Take the prime seven, okay? Huh? Now, that's a rational prime, but for some strange reason, the cookbook tells us to factor it over the Eisenstein field. Okay. And if I remember correctly, it's factorization over the Eisenstein field is something like one plus three times what I call W. <laughs> I think yep. you call it omega or something like that, or something yep. like that. Yep. And it's the primitive, your favorite primitive cube root of unity. Yep. So it's one plus three times that. And the other factor is one plus three times the other primitive cube root of unity. Uh-huh. Uh, which I guess is the Eisenstein conjugate, I guess, of that. Uh -huh. um, and um, those are the... Uh, Eisenstein prime factors of seven. But now to cook up something with the strong, the desired strong fixed point property, we take one of those two factors to the power one and the other one to the power two. And that's it. And so what's the strong fixed point property that it has? Okay. So, okay. Maybe I should try to steal the uh, screen sure. power here for a moment so I can act this out. Um, so uh, it's like, okay, so we got seven is equal to one plus three times one to the one third times one plus three times one to the two thirds. So that's, well, right? There's a, there's a subtlety here, right? I could say that's the prime factorization of seven over the Eisenstein field. But the units. Yeah, yeah, the units intrude here. Um, I mean, right, the units already intrude for, yeah. make, you know, there's a little, when you talk about prime, prime factorization being unique, well, it's yeah. not really unique, it's, unless you put in that little fudge factor about, you know, up to signs or something like that. Um, yeah. And um, up to units, yes. And that's what's going on here. So there's actually like at least three different prime factorizations of seven here. And, and somehow that's causing the confusion here or something. Okay, well, yeah, that probably is the origin of it all. Well, tell me what the strong fixed point problem uh, property is. Well, first of all, first of all, let me just write down the thing that has the property. Yep. So it's like that. And the the strong fixed point property that it has, let's call this A, okay? For the moment, let's just call it A. And A squared is equal to A conjugate up to cubes.
right? Because try squaring A here. This okay? Look at look at A here and try squaring it. So <laughs> is this going to work? What am I trying to say? Um, yeah, it, it makes perfect sense. Yes, yes. But, but switch out, tell the readers. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Yes, you, you, you tell them the story. If you, if you look at the number A there. Yes. Uh, maybe now I'm confused. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so A bar would be just the same thing where I switched who is one to the one third and who is one to the two thirds. That's right. That's right. That's right. So yes, mm -hmm. that's right. So you just move the exponent over onto the left instead of on the right. Yeah. For some reason, that's supposed to be the same as a square. Now, if I square a, yeah, the, the part that's the first power gets to be a square, but the part that's yeah. a square gets to be a fourth power. Right, but why is the fourth? Okay, but the fourth power is not, so it'd be great if the fourth power were equal to the first power, because then we'd have- <laughs> And it is, up to cubes it is, because right, this is only cubes. holding- Okay, yeah, right, exactly. So it is, but only up to cubes, yeah. Right. Only up to cubes, that's right, that's right. That's so right. Not, okay, but the other thing that's like been confusing the hell out of me- Yeah. For a long time- Yes. Is, why is this the- strong fixed point property that-, that <laughs> Well, there must be a good reason for it. Naturally from some conceptual- There must stuff. be a good conceptual reason for it, but uh, the best I can say at the moment is that, right, it's the, if you think about it, it is, you know, I'm, you know, we cooked up this, we cooked up this vector field over the three element vector, we cooked up this vector space over the three element field. We cooked up various vector spaces over the three element field by, you know, tensoring the multiplicative group of the rational field with the three element field. And, you know, that, you know, it's, it's, it then becomes a vector space over the, over the three element field. Yeah. And All right, what was the question again? <laughs> I know what I'm doing here, but I just need you to remind me of what the question was. Wow. Where did this weak fixed point? Yes, okay, yes, down? yes. So, um, so, so, right. So I, like I say, we cooked up this vector space over the over the three element field, and we cooked it up from, I don't know, the, the multiplicative group of the rational field or something like that. Actually, I guess it's from the multiplicative group. Yeah, I said that wrong. It's from the multiplicative group of the Eisenstein field, actually. It's from the multiplicative group of the Eisenstein field. And we cooked it up in a functorial way, just by this tensor product. And that multiplicative group of the functor of the, of the Eisenstein field, that was, you know, that was oh, 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 by abstract nonsense acted on by the by Eisenstein conjugation, by this, by this Galois group. And um you know, that, that's the Galois group that we're supposed to be taking a strong fixed point with respect to. So, so that means that Eisenstein con conjugation is actually turning out to be a, um, a linear operator on this um, vector space over this three element field. Why does that keep on popping up? Um, uh, and so, and and so, Eisenstein conjugation is acting. Eisenstein conjugation is order two, so it's acting as the you know an, an an order two linear operator on this vector space over the three element field. And so, it's got two eigenspaces, and the you know the, there's the one eigenspace and there's the negative one eigenspace, and one of them though one of them. One of those really sounds like it's the strong fixed points, but for some strange reason, it's the other one that we want. So you just have to figure, you have to figure out the obvious conceptual explanation for why it is that we're taking this other eigenspace, um, the one I wasn't quite expecting. But uh, you know, somehow that's what this good conceptual concept of the 
strong fixed points turns out to be in this context. So it's, you know, it's, it's something obviously I haven't given, I haven't completely given the good conceptual explanation for here, but the good conceptual explanation is obviously right nearby. Um, you know, we just have to figure out why it is. It, 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 it should be some very follow your nose thing. Why it, it, why in this case it turns, you know, I probably just forgot, you know, I probably just made a sign error or something somewhere that's going to explain, you know, very nicely why we're taking the, uh, I mean, again, I'm being sloppy here. These we need. This is these are the things that we need to clear clear up, but it's very uh, it's very promising. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm frustrated, but okay. Uh, do you want to try to teach it to me then? Do you want to figure it out right now and tell me tell me the right way? I, I'm I'm leaving it as homework for now. Um, it's really good to straighten this out, but I don't have. There's something out. else that you. Yeah. It sounded like you were trying to say something. You didn't quite say uh, yes, yes. I, but I, I just wanted to dr dramatize a little bit the finite geometric combinatorics of what's going on here. I mean, we have this little tic tac toe board, you know, two dimensional vector space over the three element field, and in this case, it's just the powers of a and of a bar or something like that. So here's like a squared. Here's a bar squared. Here's a times a bar, here's a times a bar squared. Mm -hmm. And this is a squared times a bar, and this is a squared times a bar squared. And you remember we were drawing little pictures like this and look, seeing where the eigenspaces were. So, I mean, this the diagonal is some sort of eigenspace of Eisenstein conjugation here, but for some strange reason, that turns out to be not the, strong fixed points that we want. It's actually this other eigenspace, which is, let me put it in in red or something like that here, if I can find it in red here. It's this complementary eigenspace here. So that's, you know, where this, Uh, now, the, uh, sorry, there was a horrible conflict there, right? I mean, I think the way I've got it here, this is supposed to be the A. So, you know, maybe I should have called this B or something like that. All right, I should have used two different letters. I re, in, in a bad way, I reused the letter A. This should have been. And what's B? B what is, is B? seven. Oh. <laughs> Isn't B seven? Uh, no, B is not seven. B is this thing right here. This is B. Okay, I see that. Okay, fine. Uh, and this is B bar over here. Yeah. I have the feeling that I don't quite know how to make precise to that other fixed pointy thing, the diagonal. Yeah. It's not really a fixed pointy thing at all. That other thing. Yeah. Some other weak fixed point that's just like a boring one or something. Well, I mean, we have talked about this a bit. That that other that 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 stuff on the main diagonal turns out to be very interesting too, but in a different way. It turns out to be non-abelian or something like that. <laughs> that's a real field. No real. Right, it's because uh, <clears throat> A goes along with A bar. So that's like a real, that's a subfield of the reals. That's right, that's right, that's right. That has to do with, right. So that has to do with what happens when you're taking cube roots of ordinary real numbers. And that's one of the famous complications of cubic reciprocity is that, you know, it, right? That this, this is that kind of whole, 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 historically that's part of, you know, how, things developed as they were studying cubic reciprocity, right? I mean, cubic reciprocity might have been an imitation of quadratic reciprocity, but then there were complications. And the complications included the fact that the cubic reciprocity doesn't even get started until you already have the Eisenstein things or something like that. So if, if you see what I'm saying? If, if you,
the cube root of seven doesn't have a good reciprocity pattern over the rational field. It only has a good reciprocity pattern over the Eisenstein field. Uh -huh. Whereas the sort of formal cube root of this weird Eisenstein number that's not a real number, that does have a good reciprocity pattern over the rational field. So it's some funny trade-off between, you know, these two eigenspaces are somehow very complementary to each other. And, and, you know, and, they've, and, and, you know, there are only two eigenspaces in this case. So there is something, we, we've talked about this before, but there, yeah. Yeah. there's something interesting going on here. And, right, I, I've, I've suggested that there's something very interesting going on here and that it sort of hints at, Is that the relationships between understanding abelian class field theory on the one hand, which is maybe the only thing that really deserves to be called class field theory is the abelian class field theory. And on the other hand, this non-abelian class of field theory, which maybe becomes the Langlands program or, or something like that. Um, that Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, 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 okay. Um, so this, I mean, in, right. You know, in a way, all, all, you know, most of what we've been doing, been doing here is reviewing our, um, our lowbrow ideas about a Galois descent approach to the art and correspondence. And, 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 and I'm also claiming that we're making progress here because compared to our previous attempts at this lowbrow approach, we're making progress here because I'm noticing, you know, this um, part where I'm being lazy here. So I'm, I'm noticing this lack of progress. It's, you know, this progress to notice this lack of progress. Um, you know, this, this, this complication from the, you know, for example, the, you know, the, the, the distinction between the square root of 29 and the square root of negative 29, that kind of distinction that I'm uh, sweeping under the rug here. So, um, so let's see, are we actually seeing, can you go back to the picture now? Can you take, oh, actually, I, I sort of want to show, show both of them pictures at the same time, because I'm really trying to see Are we right? We should, it, it, it's it's like I'm claiming we should be seeing three different numbers whose cube roots are giving slightly different things. So like this one and this one. Oh, those are actually giving the same. Ah, but I, right. I think if you if we were, if right if we were to take. Right. If we were to take this A, and if we were to multiply A times one to the one third, and multiply A times uh, one to the two thirds, those would give us different, those would give us three different abelian cubic extensions. Uh huh. And I would have trouble telling those apart by their splitting patterns. But if you just glom them all together, all three of those together, and perhaps also glom it with the, the cube root of one to the one third, then you'll get that thing. That, can you go to it now? <laughs> can, you, can, can you go to yeah. the picture? Yeah. So it'll be that 18 dimensional thing. 18, 18 degree extension of the rationals. Uh-huh. So, you know, we really want to understand the art and correspondence at this finer level where we can tell apart, you know, these three or four different extensions, um, th three or four different six dimensional extensions of the rationals or 
cubic extensions of the Eisenstein field. We, we want to um, uh, distinguish those, but I'm just not quite ready to do that yet. I haven't reached that sophistication level to be able to do that. But I can at least say that this 18 degree thing is the thing that includes all three of them. Mm -hmm. And so now, now, now it's it's already you know theoretically a good quitting time, but I'm also tempted to say a little bit more about what happens in the case that I was really aiming for today. So right, I mean here here we ended up just reviewing abelian cubic extensions of the rationals. Yeah, my goal for today was abelian cubic extensions of the Gaussian field. So I'm really tempted to say something about it now, but on the end, this might be a good quitting place. Um, if you don't, <laughs> maybe we could just quit here for now and, the, and with a real promise that the next time we really will try to see how this generalizes to like a billion cubic extensions of the Gaussian field, the billion cubic extensions of the, of any number field that you want. And maybe even things more general than number fields, maybe even function fields and stuff like that. And um, so, like, you know, the Gaussian field is just supposed to be an example that, you know, a first, first example of a field, a number field that's not just the rational. So it's like the first non trivial example at all. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I, I also want to do examples where we might have the ideal class group. The Picard, Picard group, or whatever you call it, being non-trivial, yep. and then also examples where the unit group gets particularly interesting, or something like that. And these are all complications. And for my example-driven way of thinking, it's you know good to see all these different complications showing up. But of course, when you want an elegant theorem and elegant proofs and everything, you sort of you know want things to be independent of these complications you just want some beautiful yeah thing that doesn't doesn't work on a case by case different base different cases depending on you know whether you have non-trivial ideal class group or non-trivial unit group or something like that so you know there's still the goal of getting a really nice complication complication independent approach to the whole correspondence and the whole theorem uh, mm -hmm. but but I still want to really see you know more examples I've I've, I've, I've I've got some examples that I've uh, pretty much worked out over the Gaussian field I want to do a bunch of more examples I want to show you these examples and um, and yeah and the more I think about it the more it seems like this is a reasonable place to quit approximately right now Partially because, uh, you know, I did not do a good job of preparing the pictures for today. So, you know, the, the next time when I when I can do it, I can really try to promise to myself and uh, uh -huh. and, and secondarily to you <laughs> that uh, I'll try to have uh, good good pictures, which will sure. be a, a lot. Of, some of the pictures will will be just like these pictures, but they'll. There's some other good pictures too. I mean, you need. I need more pictures. The more complicated the situation gets, the more elaborate pictures I need. So I really want to try to draw some, make make an attempt to draw some good elaborate pictures for next time. So is this uh, just yeah, a good place to quit? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so good. thanks a lot. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll see you. I'll see you. Yep. Great. Bye. Yep. Bye. Oh yeah, now we have to not really quit. That was oh, <laughs> thank you for thank you. For... Yeah. See, I did not do that at all. Wait, okay, this this is just take... hold on, hold on. Sorry, I should have <laughs> stopped the recording. I didn't stop it. I'm going to stop it now. That's safe. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know that you didn't stop the recording. I just stopped the screen sharing. <laughs>